maybe we start now. Okay. Uh, and 20, 20 seconds, sir. Just worry that my area will have dark cloud. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope you are having a pleasant day. It's great to be back again this week with another episode of the Strata Talk Show. With that, I would like to welcome everyone to the 20th episode of the Strata Talk Show brought to you by the Excel Academy of Real Estate. In this talk show, we will be discussing uh, issues and cases related to the management of stratified developments with various industry professionals. Joining us today, we have Mr. Kwan Yu Wai, who will speak on the topic of managerial responsibilities and maintenance techniques in dealing with interflow leakages. If you have any questions for Mr. Kwan, feel free to leave them in the Facebook comment section below, which will be addressed in the Q&A section at the end of the show. Without further ado, join me at welcoming Mr. Kwan Yu Wai. Hello, uh, good afternoon. So I hope you can hear me clear and loud. Okay, yes, uh, next you. page. Maybe. Okay, I'm uh, origin originally I'm a contractor who repair buildings, and most of the time I repair leakages. So over the years, I have accumulated uh, sufficient knowledge and experience, and doing it hand on as well as doing it in a campus level in my postgrad study. So uh, along the way, I have acquired a number of credentials, and um, now I'm uh, I have also become a speaker in interflow leakage for the tribunal and commission uh, commissioner of buildings. Next page. Next, please. So when it comes to interflow leakage, there are three law that is related to interflow leakage. So namely, Housing Development Control and Licensing Act and Strata Management Act, uh, as well as the Strata, uh, Strata Management uh, Regulations. So uh, next page, please. Okay, when we come talk about interflow leakage, uh, according to the Strata Management Act, it's uh, evidence of dampness, moisture, and water penetration. But the of course, the first thing that we will have to consider is who pay in in which type of situation and as a result the definition of common property is very important common property according to strata management act is not inside the parcel and uh used by more than one parcels okay but uh in reality yeah uh, it actually uh there's some area that, that it crashed you know so i will show you later on next slide please Okay, this is a uh, strata management act uh, SOP when it comes to interflow leakage, which I have summarized in one chart. Uh, this chart I understand is very useful because I have also highlighted the relevant section. So, uh, in order to explain this chart, perhaps you need to print out later and look into it that um, in a clearer, clearer way. Lah. Firstly, when there is a receipt of uh, a receipt of complaint in seven days or as far as practicable property manager need to go down and uh, do inspection so uh, during the inspection there are four things that need to be considered so firstly is the bill shared by more than one unit secondly is it uh, in the parcel or not inside the parcel thirdly is if it is actually during uh, happen during default liability period. If it happened during default liability period, then the case will be referred eventually to the uh, developer. That's how the Housing Development Act come into this. Uh, subsequently, upon inspection, if there is a need to access to the upper unit or the neighboring unit, then uh, the property manager need to serve notice, seven days notice, so that um, he can uh, have access after the notice, the house owner need to <coughs> uh, 
give notice, um, failing which they will be subject to uh, uh, penalty in terms of fi finance of 50,000, not more than 50,000, or three years imprisonment. So far, the law has not been uh, implemented for this part uh, because it is putting people into jail, you know, for a small issue of leakages. Um, so, and then, uh, if there is any further dispute, one can refer to the uh, COB. And if the in the event that the parcel owner for some reason cannot do, cannot afford to do, or have a lot of other reason, the management will have to take up the repair work and charge back to the, the to the account account of the particular parcel. Okay, so. Uh, if there is still dispute, when the COB intervene, then the COB can appoint a surveyor, architect, or engineer to carry out the inspection. And the, in, the, and the fee involved will be borne by the parties who is responsible to rectify the defect. So, okay, after that, or after all the inspection in five days, the building manager need to issue Form 28. Form 28 will tell who is the party responsible for the repair as well as um, the reason. But I always uh, advise property manager, if you don't have any uh, knowledge in and tool in leak detection, uh, try to write a general description, you know, because uh, there was uh, some incidents uh, whereby COB called me up and asked, hey, Guan, some property manager fill in the form wrongly, you know, and people has worked on it. So what happened next, you see? So my answer is, well, property manager have to take responsibility to their own words, you see? So uh, try to put a general description. If you see slap leaking, just write slap leaking. If you see pipe leaking, just write pipe leaking, you know. So don't go to a waterproofing leaking uh, or whichever part of the building, okay? So next, next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, I would like to share with you. Let's say when A, A is the uh, vertical pipe from the water tank down. So when A leaks, then uh, because it's shared by two unit, then of course, uh, many uh, property, the MO will have to pay for it. Uh, the management have to pay for it. But let's say B, look. Location B, B is after the T, before the water meter. A lot of people they have been thinking that before meter or after meter. Actually, that is re only relevant to the bulk meter whereby the water service, the water supply act is applicable. You know, here in the strata where strata management act is applicable, B is not shared by anyone. It's destined to one unit only. And as such, even though before water meter, the relevant uh, parcel owner need to be responsible. And let's say C. C is a pipe of, you know, that traveled along the walkway before it entered into parcel. Let's say C, lake. C is in the common area, but not share. Bear in mind, the domina dominating factor when we consider who pay is share or not share? It's not the location alone, you see. I have encountered property manager that say, hey, common area, management pay. No. In fact, common area, if it's not share, parcel owner pay. Next, next slide, please. Okay, this is a toilet inside the parcel. When A, the ho uh, horizontal pipe leak, A, is it share? No, it's not share. But B, is it share? Bear in mind, pipe shelf or the box sub in Laymentum, uh, it actually have uh, many common pipes, which is share, but inside the parcel. So what I want to tell you is, when it is share, although it's inside the parcel, property manager, uh, sorry, the management need to pay for the repair. So there is uh, the uh, confusion that is com quite common in the industry. Okay, next next slide, please. 
this is uh, Form 28. So it must uh, be issued after the full inspection, upstairs and downstairs. Bear in mind, there is a legal presumption that say water travel from top to bottom. So do not fear to issue Form 28. Do not feel that you need to serve friendly notice before you, you issue Form 28. Because uh, when there is sour situation or when there is dispute, and if you don't comply to the SOP of the Strata Management Act when it comes to interflow leakage, and you issue the Form 28, uh, let's say two weeks or three weeks later, well, you can be subject to uh, being sued in the tribunal because uh, and all the SOP must be confirmed. And they, inside the SOP, there is no friendly notice needed. Okay? So do not do not uh, create your own SOP. Lah. Just follow the law accordingly, step by step. Next slide, please. So do not try to uh, modify the form because this is a gazetted form. So, okay, let's say if the property manager hire me to do leak detection uh, before the intervention of COB, who will pay for the uh, fee of the expert? According to section 59 sub 2D, any expenses incurred in the rectification of the parcel, the management have the right to it, uh, recover the cost by charging to the respective account. As such, uh, rectification, bear in mind, inspection is part of rectification. So uh, the property manager can adopt this uh, clause when it comes to uh, paying the expert. Uh, so because if you don't take the initiative to pay the expert, hoping that eventually the respective uh, house owner will pay, people who, who is like me who do leak detection, uh, my report is not favoring to the person who pay me, you know. So in most of the cases, uh, they will not pay. They decline to pay. If the property manager doesn't take the initiative to pay me, I will not be interested to do the job. So that's how it goes. Uh. Next page, please. Okay. When there is emergency, emergency according to Shata Management Act, it is uh, something that happened that can endanger the safety of the residents and the uh, building. Possible entry is allowed. But I have I have joined some of the possible entry uh, exercise uh, in Ampang area. Bear in mind, uh, if the case is not very urgent, you can actually request a COB to bring in police from KBKT to escort you in. You know. If, let's say, the situation is so urgent that possible entry is inevitable. I will always urge you to bring along your committee, la, your guard, la, your neighbor la, to witness the operation so that there is no uh, allegation later on. So And then, and then of course, um, when it comes to law of thoughts, uh, even though you are a neighbor, not to say if you are a manager, it, when you see dripping water, you actually have a duty to put a bucket under it to mitigate the damage of the leaking, you know. So, and then in, in the event that if I cut the water, the water can stop. Can I cut the water? From human basic right point of view, you should not cut water. But if you need to cut water, please supply temporarily water, water supply uh, so that uh, people affected will still have the access to the basic human need, which is the water. So next slide, please. In the event of pipe burst, insu fire insurance in general have coverage for the damage caused by the burst pipe, be it burst domestic pipe or burst sewage pipe or whatever burst pipe. So long that is a burst pipe, I understand is covered in the fire insurance. So, but um, I will urge you to look into the insurance policy and clarify it. Next slide, please. 
Okay, is interflow leakage um, a concern? For your information, uh, uh, water is the factor that started to get, uh, started to cause the gym to multiply in accelerated rate. You know? So when there is excessive dampness, your kuman, your kula, your virus, all will be growing in a, in a very speedy way. So uh, as a, a down, some level of immune system but children the pregnant the old and the sick they are they have less uh, immune system so as a result any uh, excessive dampness even though without a uh, visible mold is unhygienic to people with compromised uh, immune system so uh, next page please next slide please so this is mold mold actually is a microscopic plant you know it have root, it have trunk, it have seed, and water is the the condition, the variable condition that can uh, cause it to grow. Oxygen, nutrient, and temperature is readily available. We cannot control. Only water we can control. Next slide, please. Okay, why do we during during the leaking situation uh, at the dam spot, we only see the circular colorful sometimes most of the time it's black uh circular stain that look uh look like growing in time you know so in fact uh we why we see mold and not bacteria in fact they come together okay it's simply because bacteria and virus is much smaller even uh dust mite is even much smaller than the uh mold that's, that's why we see more, but in fact, they come together as a, in a battalion of biological contaminants. Next slide, please. So, uh, this is a report from Institute of Medicine USA to tell you scientifically that, yes, mold is hazardous. It's a health hazard. Next slide, please. And beside mold, of course, building uh, excessive dampness uh, can cause a lot of uh them to the building material like timber like cement like concrete will expand when it uh, is wet and um, other material metal like rust uh, uh, sorry uh, like like steel like other metals it will start to rust and when it rusts it will also expand you know and started to lose the structural integrity of the particular metal okay so uh, next slide, please. Why there is leakage? According to this Kitab Sumo Bocho, the, the so-called Kitab Sumo Bocho, okay? Uh, construction Waterproofing Handbook. Why there is leak? There must be water. There must be a force. And there must be cavity or bridge to allow the water to, to go through. Uh, next slide, please. This is very true for the liquid water ingress. For condensation, we need to understand condensation from the point of building size of air flow, heat flow, and moisture flow. This is uh, all basic, basic elements or uh, basic principle of physics, which actually applicable when it comes to analysis of condensation. Next slide. Uh, so you environmental protection agency also have their moisture control principle. So control liquid water, control condensation, and in the area that is prone to dampness, do not use material like timber, like fabric, like carpet, in this type of material that can, that the mold can start to grow easily or start to, to dilapidate easily. Next slide, please. So this is a systematic approach and when it comes to uh, investigation of leakages we are approaching to the technical side now okay so this we need to access to the site we need to see the pattern of dripping water if the dripping water uh there, there is con it, it, it is not uh it is not continuous okay so sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't happen and if it, it happened only during rain then there must be either roof leakage 
rainwater down pipe, gutter, or external wall crack. So, uh, for for leaking that is continuous, uh, continuous, then there could be uh, most likely domestic water pipe leaking or water pouring failure or or waste pipe. Uh, it depends on the smell as well. So, and then we need to look into the, we need to interview the uh, parcel owner. We need to check with the service crew or the uh, technician. And then we do inspection. And if possible, we do some uh, investigative testing to have more understanding and uh, more holistic and accurate understanding of the cause of leaking. So then uh, let to do the re uh, report and the rectification. Next slide, please. So this is the some of the equipment that we use to detect moisture. Okay, something like a moisture meter. This moisture meter, uh, there are two two type, two major type. The first type use ultrasound. The second type use an anode and cathode. Uh, look at the pin. Look at the pin of the moisture meter. It's one one side is anode, one side is cathode. So when there is, uh, so when you put the pin onto the surface, if there is any water, the electric will be conducted. That's how we uh, measure water with electricity. Okay. So if there is any water, the more water, the more electricity conducted. So it's all come to the base principle of resistance as well as uh, electric flow. Next slide, please. Okay, moisture meter, uh, sorry, infrared imaging. Infrared, you, you see when you go to the restaurant during MCO, uh, people will put uh, something to measure your forehead. That's actually uh, infrared, okay? But it only has one point. Our engineering type of infrared, it comprises of thousands of points. And the different temperature is represented by different colors. Okay, so this is this is how I look like in infrared. Okay, so uh, the cold there is water inside the building. But for external, it actually go reverse, you know. Uh, we actually spot, uh, look for hot spot. Uh, all this can be done with infrared. And nowadays, uh, we have drone infrared. <laughs> so, so the, the you know, infrared is so powerful. With, when that is added with the wing, uh, it's like a tiger with wing, you know, right? So, okay, uh, endoscope, endoscope like this, where I connect it to my cable. Then it become camera ula, which I can slot into any narrow area or or uh, for investigation. Next slide, please. And uh, the next one is pressure gauge testing. Pressure gauge testing is a uh, uh, equipment that we use to verify the water tightness of domestic pipe. So uh, there are two two type two model. One come with a container. So we, we pump in water without the handy, handy lever, okay? Another one is just the pressure gauge and the relevant valve. This one, uh, we can tap into the water pressure of the existing building and do the pressure gauge testing. Uh, next slide, please. I will show you more uh, how it works uh, from, the, from the diagram later on. Wall scanner is a uh, ultrasound equipment. They can tell me what is inside the wall or concrete. It can be plastic, it can be wood, it can be metal, ferrous metal, non-ferrous metal. Um, so it's quite useful. Lah. And let's say for underground, how do you detect underground? You see, doctor use stethoscope. We also use stethoscope, but our stethoscope is as big as my head. Lah. So we can listen to the ground up to 10 feet deep using tetoscope. Uh, this, uh, I, I will show you more diagram later on. Next slide, please. Okay, we can also extract sample from the site 
and uh, send it to lab to see if there is any chloride, uh, if there is any nitrate, because groundwater have nitrate. Uh, domestic water have small quantity of uh, chlorine, but sea water have high quantity of chlorine. So there is a difference between that, okay? And, uh, and there, there is a lot of different implication. When it comes to pH, when it comes to wastewater, wastewater have E. coli. So we can use this type of parameter to identify what type of water is that. This is particularly useful for basement that emerge in the basement, okay? So, okay, just now we talk about moisture meter. So if we have a too big moisture meter with too big pain, okay, and bear in mind, most of our, our waterproofing material are insulated. It doesn't conduct electric. So if we spray water on our waterproofing uh, area and we use this two probe to walk along, touch, touch the waterproof and walk along, if there is any erding, there will be some big, big, big sound and you can be alerted that the cavity is actually there. That is for low voltage electronic leak detector. For high voltage one, you can see the spark, you know, jumping into the cavities. This is how, how leak detection technology works, okay, in developed country. So far that I know, um, this technology hasn't reached Malaysia, but I also um, don't encourage it to have it because it's too expensive. Next, next slide, please. Okay. When you open the ceiling, you'll be having a nightmare. There are so many possibility of water sources. Be it pipe, be it aircon, be it waterproof, external wall roof, even firefighting pipe contain a lot of water. Next slide, please. Okay. This is how waterproofing look like, okay? In 3D, you can see it actually extended to the pipe inside. Uh, and from this 2D diagram, it shows that uh, you need to go into your your room one feet at the door area, okay? And it need to be extended up to six feet high at the shower cubicle. For the area that is not subject to water splashing during shower, the, up, the upturn on the wall is only uh, one feet, 300 mm is required. So next slide, please. Uh, when there is leakage, how do we do, how do we know, how can we confirm it? Okay, firstly, this is an uh, actual site of mine uh, in balcony. So I block the balcony uh, with newspaper covered by plus, uh, the black garbage plastic bag, you know. And I measure the moisture level at the lower floor with water stain before the flood test. According to ASTM D5957, the flood test uh, need to be conducted with minimum 24 hours with less than four inch of water and regular monitoring is required. Why regular monitoring is, is required? I, let me share my experience with you. There was an incident whereby my flood test was too successful and uh, the water soaked into the plaster ceiling, the whole toilet, plaster ceiling collapse, causing more damage. In another case, the water went into the DB box downstairs. Luckily, no electrocution. Otherwise, uh, I will, will not be speaking here. You will not know me, you know. So these are all the risks, inherent risks of conducting flood tests, which you need to be aware of. So when you do flood tests, um, if you cannot be there, make sure the house owner are there and tell them uh, if the water receipt please tell me to fill in water if you can see a low warming now can you quickly call me up and i can come here to verify you know there is a obvious increase in dampness using moisture meter so that you can stop the the what blood flood test okay you do not need to wait till the secondary damage uh, arrive uh, okay like this Next slide, please. So this is how we seal the, the water floor trap for the purpose of flood testing. You see uh, a number of people 
they use transparency to cover the floor trap. Actually, this is not correct, you know, because if you look at the diagram, we should actually block it inside the floor trap the way that I show. Okay. So uh, next slide, please. Okay. There's some method nowadays that uh, apply epoxy coating on the toilet. It's quite a cost-effective manner, but it's not a durable one because uh, good waterproofing should be elastic and chemical resistant. Uh, epoxy lack the elasticity, although it's very chemical resistant. So um, that's why, uh, because our building actually expand and move one, you know. So when there is no elasticity, when it cracks easily, then water will start to penetrate again. Next slide, please. And PU grouting is very debatable, right? Everyone knows that it's no good, but everyone is doing it simply because it's the cheapest way. Being an infrared inspector, I use infrared to monitor PU grouting. And from infrared point of view, the dampness actually spread. Them. So when it spread until it reached the next cavity, water starts to leak again. That's why waterproofing warranty carry one month to three months warranty only. Simply because it's not a way to resolve it to the root cause. You know? Unless you can prove that the crack is no longer moving, no longer dynamic, and the source has been rectified, then you should uh, you should seal up the cavity with PU grouting. Next slide, please. Bye. All type of pipe, waste pipe, domestic pipe, AM pipe, common waste pipe, rainwater down pipe. Next slide. Okay. So when, okay, we talk about waste pipe for the time being, okay? Waste pipe typically crack, especially at the elbow due to impact, okay? It's, it's thin as compared to the cast iron pipe uh, next to it. But cast iron pipe, after its service life span, uh, it has a tendency to crack by itself due to corrosion. And uh, the third photo is actually a crack, a crack, vertical crack from top to bottom uh, of a cast iron pipe. You know, imagine uh, when cast iron when iron expand, when iron rust it expand, but when it start to expand, it will push each other, and it, when they have no way to push each other, it pack start to crack like this. Okay, next slide. And uh, if I can pour in uh, red hot water into the uh, drain pipe, uh, I can detect it so easily with infrared imaging. Okay, next slide. And in one of the cases, uh, I actually needed an in endoscope to check it because the leaking is right behind the box up. You know? So without endoscope, I really cannot find or I will have much more difficulty uh, to find it. Uh. You know, this is the real life case uh, that I attended back in the KLCC and Cliff area. Next slide. Uh, this is how we rectified the pipe. We replaced the cast iron pipe uh, to the UPVC pipe. And uh, this is my slide as well. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. For some area that the pipe penetrate into concrete element, uh, we, are not, we are not allowed to hack, you know. But this crack is just right above the beam. So I conveniently use underwater epoxy to seal it up. And I discover underwater epoxy come in different grade. But the very good grade, it really works so perfectly, you know. Because epoxy etch into the surface of whatever surface that they, they have contact. It aged and it's whole and it become as hard as stone. So, so far, all this job have no complaint all day after, until today. I've been in the industry for more than 22 years, you know, and it, this is really work. Okay? For, for crack pipe that doesn't have pressure. So, okay? So, this, this is a, quite a useful method. Next slide, please. So when there is a block pipe, these are the beside the rotana, these are the, the three ways that you can uh, 
clear clear the blockage easily la. one of them is a uh, kinetic water ram that harness water uh, air pressure we pump the air from this this black color handle at the back you know at beside the trigger so we keep on pumping air until the air pressure becomes so high and once we trigger you can travel into any ship and any distance you know it's so fast that uh, it goes so fast the small pipe horizontal uh, i mean uh vertical to it the the floor trap it doesn't reduce the pressure you know and secondly high pressure water jetting then look look at this clearly one point shoot to the front and three points shoot to the back it actually moves in to the because three points shoot to the back diagonally it doesn't damage the plastic pipe but uh and it will bring the hose uh, into the into the drain by itself you know because it pushed to the back and uh thirdly it's a mechanical snake router this type of uh motorized uh, rotan when it when you install different uh, adapter or head at the at the front it can break stone it can uh clear the leaf or root you know so it's also well, quite a powerful method to clear pipe easily next slide please another encounter another situation in our pump room uh, without leaking there's so extensive corrosion which soon the pit corrosion will happen and start to leak this is simply because of poor ventilation and the dense and thick gas chlorine gas you know when okay when look at look at this uh the stainless steel tank stainless steel tank without pain is the first place water will condense it at night so when water encounter chlorine gas it become chloride acid and start to damage metal start to damage concrete bear in mind chloride acid can even corrode gold so uh, this is something that one need to be aware of when you install stainless steel pipe or stainless steel fitting into the tank into the uh, pump room because uh, the ventilation of chlorine gas is is not only hazardous to human but also hazardous to metal okay next slide please next slide please okay pvc pipe domestic pipe burst why it burst next slide okay Suran Jaya Premata and Agara have recommendation. Uh, Pasa resident residential unit, uh, uh, high rise residential unit, should have water pressure above 10 meter head, less but less than 30 meter head. If there is, uh, if the pressure is too high, a pressure reducing valve should be employed. This is what is extracted from the uniform technical guide of water reticulation and plumbing published by spam that you can download from internet i think if not mistaken this is uh, page 59 so okay what i want to show you is pressure reducing of if not service in time in due time twice a year recommended by some manufacturer three times once by the other manufacturer so check with your manufacturer how often it should be serviced and if you don't service it the mechanism inside it will go haywire sometimes the water pressure can become so high sometimes the water pressure can drop so drastically okay the diaphragm of the pressure reducing valve need to be replaced every four to five years subject to the respective manufacturer next slide please and the industry has been practicing uh, wrongly because uh, they like to set the pressure reducing valve uh, to two bar. You know. So bear in mind, every drop of each story, there will be a, a drop of water pressure by 0 0.3 bar. In, sorry, an increase of water pressure by 0 0.3 bar. That's why in the first three floor, the first 
three highest floor where the water pressure is not enough, we need a pump. Okay? After the first three floor, then it go by gravity. And you can see, uh, 10 meter head is 0 0.98 bar. Uh, 30 meter head is 2.94 bar. So we put it to the closest decimal. Uh, 1.2 bar is safe. 2.7 bar is also safe. Okay? But if you set it at 2 bar, at the, at the fifth floor, the ground floor will suffer from high water pressure. I would like to share with you, there was a year in 2019 where all the president and I had a president and president. We have come to a conclusion unanimously to say that in the event someone go into the unit and discover the water pressure is more than three bar, any burst pipe management will manage and maintain by management. If management doesn't supply the safe water pressure, uh, water with safe water pressure and pipe burst, and I want to share with you, uh, water heater, faucet, or other, um, uh, I think, toiletry uh, utilities uh, is designed to work in three bar or less than three bar. Imagine if uh, water heater bursts, uh, the water may go into the wires and it can cause electrocution as well. No? So this is not something that you should uh, take. Water pressure management. Next slide, please. And TPKT recommend. Cuci tangki setiap tahun. So, can can I know how many of you have their water tank ever washed? <laughs> if if the water pressure is so bad, uh, it's detrimental to your PRV. Uh, okay. So, uh, next slide, please. So, when you have, when you, you can hear mm, sound, water hammering sound, especially the inside the pump room where, where from the ground floor you pump to the higher floor uh, water tank. When you when the pump stop, water will push back, you know, due to gravity, it will bang the uh, pipe and cause a lot of hammering. The hammering can, can be as heavy as 600 pounds, like a big hammer banging into your pipe, you know, waiting for time to burst. So when you have a uh, hammering, you do need a water hammer arrester to which have a layer of air. And when when the pressure surge, the piston will move around and the air will become an absorber to absorb the pressure surge. Okay, next slide, please. So, the how do we check? Next, next slide, please. This is the pressure gauge testing uh, equipment that is uh, meant for litigation purposes. Uh. We actually bring in a laptop, connect it to the data logger to plot the pressure or the water pressure throughout one hour to see to see if there's any drop in pressure. Okay, this is the setting of uh, pressure gauge testing for litigation purposes. Next slide. So I would like to share with you what I have done uh, at the actual site. Uh. Okay, this is the typical configuration of, of uh, pipe, domestic pipe for the, okay. Uh, in this toilet, okay, it, it, let's say it only have a toilet. In this toilet, there are two waff. One waff for cold water, one waff for hot water. So if I connect my pressure gauge to point A1 and close close A2, A3, and then I also close waff A. So when I pressurize, pump in water from my water, uh, the container, water container, and the handy pump from point A1, the pressure will raise up because it's a closed loop. So when the pressure raises up, let's say one bar, two bar, 
and I shut down my my uh, pressure gauge sinking, it will become a closed loop. If there is no leakage, the pressure will not drop. If there is drop in water pressure from the pressure gauge testing kit that I can observe, then there must be a, some leakage in this zone comprising from A1. This zone is having some form of leakages. And bear in mind, if you have a water heater, which look like this type of water heater above the ceiling level, your your pressure gauge cannot cannot pressurize water uh this type of pipe simply because uh, inside the water tank there is one layer of air pressure gauge testing kits uh. so next slide please uh, Okay, this is actual site. My pressure gauge testing kit, I connected 12, 11 p.m. to bar. In one minute, it dropped by 0 0.7 bar, confirming that there's a leakage, leakage in the concealed pipe. When you do all this, all the facade must be closed tightly, okay? And then uh, you need to check your pressure gauge is it leaking which is visible that you can check you must check make sure there's no leakage from from experience we actually need to release the pressure let's say from okay we after we confirm there is a uh, leakage we need to pressurize the pump again up to two bar okay Okay, sorry, sorry, I rephrase. Let's say if there is no leaking, there are only there are two possibilities. First possibility is, yeah, there memang, memang no leaking. Lah. Second possibility is one the valve that control the the incoming water pipe actually leak. Whatever that leak out from the pipe is replenished from the main pipe. So when we reduce the water pressure to one bar. Okay, we need to shut, uh, we need still, we, we, we need to, okay, let's say original two bar, right? So no leakage. So in the event that you there is no drop of water pressure, we need to reduce the, uh, release a bit of water to bring down the pressure to one bar. And wait for a while to see if it returns to two bar. If it returns to two bar, it means that the water that leaked out have been replenished back due to the faulty stop cock from, from the main, main water supply. Okay, next slide, please. So, the issue is we know this zone is leaking. Where is the leak? Imagine if we can fill in ice water in our water container that I mentioned just now, that I showed just now and we pump in ice water into the pipe. Bear in mind, the pipe is very close to the surface. If we can pump in ice water to the pipe and cool down the pipe, we can use infrared to see the pipe. There is the pipe leaking. And you can see from this picture, the pipe is actually traveling at the corner and bend 90 degree to the other side, stoner. Okay, next slide, please. I'm sorry, raining sound too much. Uh, okay, this side, this is another toilet. I have cooled down the pipe and I use wall scanner to confirm, yes, there is a pipe. And if the pipe is leaking, you can see a big patch of blue color. And that is where your plumber should hang and rectify the pipe. Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, okay, let's say a huge estate. How many acres? Okay, suddenly your, your 
seven five one thousand you jump to three thousand next month five thousand so how much is taking but in the whole estate how to find this there is a technology to find it okay firstly we use a ground penetrating radar to detect all the location of the uh, underground pipe after that we use a sound logger to make to put into different chamber when we start to trigger the water first sound you know by opening the, the resuming the water supply the the speed of uh the speed of the burst sound traveling to the logger at the left and traveling at the to the logger on the right the different of the timing we can estimate where is the uh burst underground pipe and from there at night midnight then we will bring in our uh, tetoscope type of uh, sound detector to confirm there is a leakage at the location that the computer uh, generate for us this technology is so advanced there's no standard no specific standard to regulate it simply because it's too advanced so so uh water water uh Water authority actually uh, employ this type of water engineer to detect their their leakage uh, along the main road, you know, um, for the underground pipe. So I, I work with a number of them uh, to help the industry. Next slide, please. Okay, condensation, air con pipe. The colder the uh, the air, the more likelihood it will condense it. Next slide. Bear in mind, uh, aircon have, uh, okay, chiller type of aircon, the centralized aircon, have four function. It dry up the air, it filter the air, it uh, cool down the air, and it need to insert positive air pressure so that the na the natural fresh air, which is untreated, humid, uh, and come with dust, do not enter into the building. But uh, split unit aircon uh, serve two function. Uh. It cool down the air and it dry up the air. The colder it is, the drier it must be. Otherwise, it will condense it. So condensation is a factor of surface temperature as, as well as ambient humidity. Okay. So let's say if your copper, copper pipe is not well insulated, then you have condensation. And in Malaysia, um, the will be very... Uh, substantial okay and our aircon man i uh, like to wrap wrap the aircon joint insulation uh, the, the the joint of the insulation so they press out the air which is a good insulator and let's say do let's say the third photo uh, if the uh, air conducting is not supported well and it vibrate and it can break you know so when the cold air release from that broken uh, insulation the the bottom part of the floor will the, the it's not it's not this part uh, it's actually the downstairs will have one big patch of even droplets of water in a big area like the fourth photo okay this is a typical type of uh situation under under operation theater under computer center, <laughs> okay, where aircon is open uh, extensively. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. I would like to show you how proper insulation should look like, you know, that doesn't press out the air. next slide please and in one of the server room i actually have uh, done this rectification by installing uh, rock wool and uh, canvas and i make sure the canvas is airtight so that the humid air will not have a chance to touch the cold surface above the rock wool that's how it works and until today it worked perfectly well and this is the effective way of handling condensation you know only insulation can handle it next slide please 
And of course, external wall crack uh, in Malaysia due to the excessive heat, uh, we always have uh, this type of crack on the highest floor under the flat roof. Okay, we also have all, all this type of crack uh, at the interface of brick and uh, metal frame or brick and the concrete element, uh, concrete component. Next slide, please. All this uh, is because uh, different bu building material have different coefficient of thermal expansion. So when we assemble it in different orientation, uh, when it expand and contract, this this wall will crack very badly, you know. So uh, HK setting is one of the standard used uh, by adopting the technology of infrared imaging to detect dampness and crack uh, surfaces with infrared uh, is very convenient and very co uh, efficient and very accurate as well. Next slide, please. And if we have this type of uh, building facade, uh, oh, even Superman or Spider-Man cannot reach. Uh, maybe only Superman can reach. You know? Okay, so always advise owner do not build this type of uh, uh, building, <laughs> which is very extensive uh, when it comes to the cost of maintenance next slide please so now this is an extra site where i measure the temperature and this happened very common in malaysia at the flat roof especially if the flat roof have a protruding building like a leaf motor room you know. so uh, and this type of crack is actually dynamic i measure uh, the crack uh, of a small leaf motor room Expand and contract at 0 0.5 mm between 8.30 to 1.30 p.m. You know? So the crack is actually expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. And do not try to fill it up with cement because once you block the, the area of, due, of the movement induced by the heat, it will crack further. You should always use elastic material to seal it up. So next slide, please. Oh, 58 minutes already. <laughs> so this is uh, the degree of um, severity of crack. Huh? Next slide. It has implication of the rectification method. And of course, roof. Roof is a major issue of leaking. We have flat roof, we have pitch roof, we have metal roof. Next slide. And uh, due to the environmental, uh, environmental pollution and the heat wave, uh, we our building a uh, roof is subject to a lot of uh accelerated deterioration imagine places like high comma uh, meteorological department discover the few minutes of ph is actually too how corrosive it is you know so our concrete our metal roof can go gone easily uh, in this area next slide so there are seven family of waterproofing each of them it have different characteristics, elasticity, stability to heat and ultraviolet. And uh, some of them scientifically has been proven not suitable for Malaysia. So uh, some of them is flammable. So uniform building bylaw disallow all this. So uh, as a building manager, please do your homework to help the com uh, committee to select proper system. Next slide. Next slide, please. And torch membrane is the most common way of rectification, but uh, scientific paper have shown it's not suitable to the tropics simply because bitumen, the nature of bitumen is, is not ultraviolet stable as well as heat stable. That's why you can see our tar road. Uh, in the first year, is, it was black color second and third year become gray color in the fourth year it become white color <laughs> or light light gray color and in the fifth year full of pothole bitumen is is not suitable for for the tropical in the developed country where the cold day is more than the hot day is okay it's, it's okay you know next slide please so uh, a lot of coating system is also not suitable and uh we also use infrared imaging uh, to detect the water pocket. Uh, I will explain to you in further detail uh, shortly. 
And for coating type, uh, we actually need a bond breaker for area that is prone to cracking and movement. Okay, next slide, please. And this is uh, one of the sites that I use infrared imaging. You see, uh, compared to dry and the wet concrete, wet concrete due to waterproofing failure. On surface, there is no surface bonding water, okay? Because the water is inside the concrete, so under the hot sun and the when dry concrete and hot wet concrete drop the same heat, same amount of heat, the, in the evening, the heat will dissipate faster in the dry concrete area. But in the concrete area with water pocket underneath the surface, it becomes hotter simply because water can retain the heat longer, you know, as compared to dry concrete. So at 9, 8 p.m., based on STM C1153, we do infrared imaging uh, to detect the water pocket and to confirm it with this type of uh, capacitant type of uh, motion meter that can penetrate up to 20 mm from the surface to confirm the availability of the water pocket. So this is a scientific way of uh, uh, identify leakage. And in this case, uh, the leakage is due to cavity. We found poor workmanship and poor termination at the piping penetration. So, okay, next slide, please. And so far from my uh, own research, uh, I discover Keton ethylene ester is by far the best and the most suitable type of waterproofing material in Malaysia because it reflects the heat, it cool down the surface by 10 degrees Celsius, and it is permanently elastic. And elasticity is very important when it comes to our roof because of the excessive heat. In University of Malaya, a group of uh, students and I, we did an experiment in a, in a small roof, small concrete roof in University of Malaya campus. Uh, we discovered at 1.30 p.m., the temperature was 82 degrees Celsius on average. 82 degrees Celsius, okay? At 4 a.m., it was at 17 degrees Celsius. So the difference from daytime to nighttime is 65 degrees. If you multiply it with coefficient of thermal expansion, it actually expand and contract. Next, next slide, please. That makes elasticity so important. And if you need to refurbish your, your uh, slab, uh, try to make it the maintainable design like this, you know, where in future you can easily dismantle the, the slab, you know, the movable slab, check what is happening inside, and you can re-waterproof it easily with just the bituminous type of waterproofing. Uh, you see the air gap allowed ventilation, the thick concrete slab is uh, insulated against the heat, and the, and the uh, I, I mean the, the bright color Reflective is actually reflective of the heat and the solar energy. So uh, try to make it more maintainable design for the future, you know. Then you can bring down the life cycle cost. So uh, next slide, please. And in swimming pool, in flat roof in swimming pool is very bad because uh, in, do you know why you actually need to replenish the chlorine, algae? control agent uh, every two days. Uh, where is the chlorine gone to? Chlorine is in the swimming pool. It's volatile. Under the hot sun, it will evaporate. In two days' time, it's gone. And it is 2.5 times heavier than air. So it always floats on the concrete deck. So when it encounter water, it becomes chloride acid. Attack the reinforcement steel bar. Attack your waterproofing and your concrete. So that's why in water, uh, waterproofing in swimming pool, if it's not chemical resistant, it's disastrous. Okay, next slide. And it, it can cause damage uh, to concrete, you know, so badly like this, you know. And this could be a structural structural issue, okay. And, but unfortunately, most of our structural engineers are not aware of corrosion engineering. Some of them don't even see corrosion as a risk, you see. Very sad to say, but this is known under uniform uh, EN1504, which I will explain to you in the next slide. Next slide, please. 
Okay, KPKT recommend in the event of diagnosis and repair of concrete to comply to EN1504. EN1504 not only, not only waterproof, but also corrosion control. So imagine uh, if your water start to go into the concrete, the corrosion matrix has been formed, the anode and cathode side has been formed, the corrosion has started, even though you're waterproof on top of the surface, surface uh, of the you know the swimming pool once the corrosion has started the reinforcement steel bar will keep on expanding it will expand up to 6.5 times of original size cracking the concrete from, from inside and this corrosion will continue even though it will reduce in speed after you waterproof so whatever you waterproof it will soon crack and there is an exclusion in any waterproofing warranty letter engineering fault or crack is an exclusion clause for their warranty. So as a building manager, do please do your homework uh, to advise corrosion control as well as moisture control when it comes to rewater proving. Okay, next slide, please. So this is the typically how concrete is by uh, corrosion. So when corrosion product, the rust uh, start to expand, so the reinforcement steel bar will deplete in size in diameter so drop of tensile strength crack concrete have no compressive strength so overall your tensile strength your compressing strength start to drop and yeah then it will cause a lot of damage uh, next slide please corrosion control have a way to measure with half cell corrosion mapping I can do it. Uh, no, I'm a competent person to do it uh, as well as to to test with rebound hammer. Because when the concrete crack, the first thing it happen is delamination. We can actually hear hollow sound when we knock on it. You know, so if we discover corrosion that have started, we can use rebound hammer to check the integrity of the compressive strength. Okay, next slide, please. And pitch roof. Yeah, uh, climate change has caused a lot of stronger wind. And if, if your wind is lifted by the wind, please find a way to enforce it like the way that I show it, you know. This is actually based on an improved, improvised British standard for roofing due to the climate change, you know. Uh, so they have more clipping and enforcement system nowadays. And uh, of course, uh, pitch roof, clay tile or concrete tile can be repainted and refurbish uh, to improve the uh, porosity against the rainwater ingressor. So next slide, please. A metal roof also have a method to for refurbishment by applying a base of uh, sacrificial coating, primer, and then the finishing, like what I, I show in the diagram, okay? And uh, the use of light color, uh, the roof is always due to the less uh, deterioration as uh, uh, I mean uh, due to the reduction in the solar solar energy received due to uh, because it's reflected okay next slide please next slide please okay on the flat roof uh, we check for the hotspot According to EF15 uh, ASTM C1152, for the indoor environment, we have cold spot because in internal area is always cold uh, based on BSEN13187. Next slide. And uh, most recently, we discovered there are more racing water due to the racing water table. And uh, Uniform Building by Law Section 84 Sub 4, this allow any dampness in, in uh, basement simply because our building is not designed to be floating on the water. You know? So if there is any uh, discovery of water in your basement or your lift pit, uh, you do need to do further study to see the pH as well as the type of uh, pollutants inside the, inside the water sample. You know? So we can understand the further the implication to the foundation. Next slide, please. 
So, whatever you have rectified, the place is full of germs if the dampness is there for more than 48 hours. Okay? So, all this dampness, uh, mold, uh, virus, uh, bacteria, even though you kill it, if you don't remove it physically out uh, by wiping it, by using HEPA vacuum to, to suck it, and uh, mold, be it alive or dead, is equally allergenic. That's why it needs to be physically removed. To return it to the original state or ecology, with small quantity of mold and virus and bacteria only. Next slide, please. This is how we do uh, mold remediation work to prevent uh, cross-contamination using containment, using uh, the fan to depressurize the area as, as well as protecting our uh, worker with uh, all type of PPE. Lah. For this, for the big scale, for the small scale, next slide, please. I'm almost done. Um, this is a house belong to um, the husband is a doctor, the wife is a lawyer. So if I don't enter to do this sort of containment and re remediation, the case will end up in the court. Lah. So besides having containment, I also have air filter. Next slide. I actually use a pin lah, to encapsulate, encapsulate the mold, scrape it off physically, repair and flatten the surface and repaint the wall. And yeah, by this method, the ecology can be returned to original, okay? A small quantity of mold and bacteria spores uh, in the environment only. Next slide. Bear in mind, we do not need to live in a clean room one, you know, okay? So we need to return the uh, dam building into the natural ecology with small quantity of uh, contaminant only. So, in conclusion, water leakage is not a defect, it's a consequence of the defect. We need to address waterproofing, uh, we need to address leaking, you see, uh, we can diagnose it with a lot of different methods, uh, but all these scientific methods uh, have their strengths and weaknesses. Uh. We need to know all these strengths and weaknesses to complement the use of, of all these methods. And durable, uh, effective remediation address the root cause do not uh, compromise to the cosmetic repair because it will soon come back. And whatever the rectification, whatever the repair work, it must have ended with a proper sanitizing method. You know, at least use Dettol to wipe the whole house if possible, including the ceiling. Next slide. And um, I thank you for your patience. Uh, you can contact me or you can read my articles you know, in my blog or my iProperty platform. Um, so uh, any question that you think I can uh, help, uh, please contact me. So is there any question that I can, uh, you need to address? All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwan, for that very insightful talk. We have now reached the Q&A segment of this talk show where Mr. Kwan will hopefully clarify any questions you have on today's topic. So the first question we have is from Mr. Chu Yong Tao, which is, must parcel owners allow access to the persons carrying out the inspection? According to the act, yes, we have always encounter some the guild being your owner. <laughs> The owner, in some of the tribunal cases that I, I got involved, uh, I try to uh, bring in site to do inspection even though I don't enter to the unit. You know. But I have to rely on some of the legal principles like res ipsa to, to use, uh, you, you know, to isolate. Okay, something like there are only three possibilities. So I ask, if I isolate the two, the last one must be the cost. So this is the use of legal principle to help us to build the case. So I do encounter cases that because the, they are not allowed to enter for some assessment, but I'm there to help them to fill in the form 28 to say that 
the water come from this unit. Yeah. So there are some some method to do it now. But as I said, you must know the pro and cons of each method so that you can complement them. You know, the strong complement the weak, you know. So to derive a meaningful and uh, meaningful findings. Sir. Any other question? All right. For the second question, we have a question from Miss Mizadi, which is uh, fossil owners do not own anything else besides their allocated unit and must depend on mutual cooperation to maintain the condition of the property. In the absence of such cooperation, what resources do parcel owners have to prevent deterioration or damage to their property? Yeah, that's why the law is here. Long. Without the law, it was even worse, you know. But any any dispute must be that's why the tribunal is here to help to resolve all this now. Uh, and there's one part uh, at the end we still need to communicate uh, you know in a very con in a inclusive and uh, solution uh. Because, uh, technically it can be done but if the upstairs have some problem which I'm very good in solving, you know, I'm very good in solving the uh, human dispute one, you know. I, I like to study law because the law actually gives me what to ask, you know. What is reasonable in this sort of situation, you know, how we should communicate with each other by showing proof, you know, by getting help to, to cool the atmosphere so that everyone can communicate. Mm. Uh, I mean, in the stratified building, um, everyone know that your wall is my wall, my ceiling is your floor, you know. Somehow, one day, I will also connect one. So, I think communication, uh, communication is very important. Okay, the next question. The next question is from Miss Kam Yuan, which is, how if after the PM done inspection into floor leakage, the upstairs owner doesn't want to sign the form 28. After that, call also not answer. Go to his unit, also cannot find the owner. Then the owner says that he didn't receive the form from management. Okay, uh, Dr. Kam. This is Dr. Kam. Okay, Dr. Kam. Uh, okay. Firstly, Form 28 is not signed by the owner. Form 28 is signed by the property manager. Okay, so the owner just have to receive. It. But uh, the SOP of serving notice will come into place. Uh. If the situation is very urgent, that you can prove it is detrimental or is it can endanger the building or the resident possible entry is allowed but as i said like, whatever possible entry is allowed uh, get or your committee get your neighbor to join <laughs> to join you you see because uh, let's say if he, if the people say i hilang satu ratus ribu i hilang berapa ratus ribu then now you see um secondly uh if it's not so urgent COB can can come in uh, to the picture with their police to help you to escort in, you know. So I did join some of the forcible entry operation. And uh, after I got the entry, then I come up with the report. Um, it's not, uh, it still can be done, uh, you know. It's just a matter of the SOP uh, that we need to comply with. Okay, so I think that was the last question for today. We have now reached the end of this talk show. Once again, I would like to thank Mr. Kwan for sharing his insights and perspectives on today's topic and the participants for tuning in today. 
With the closing of episode 20, I would like to invite the participants to join the Strata Conference 2022 on the 2nd of July. Uh, for those interested in joining, you may scan the QR code uh, displayed on the screen. And uh, once again, thanks again for joining and we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.